holding points which are hard to come by by the team in Hopping. Down this end, I thought I'd catch up with the person behind the opposition bench that Rick was talking about. His name is Simon D Season from Bodie Manic, his first point to the game. An entertaining start to this second quarter. Oh, we've got to have another look at these. It's an exciting place to start this second quarter. Bodie Manic, back to back bodies. Great pass from Chris Norton. Look at that. Oh, the elevator stopped at the at the top floor and he just took the stairs the rest of the way. <laughs> Probably got about the third floor and then he stopped, but long man. The numbers normally don't lie. So we talk about the rebounding count for the Wildcats. The last two games, they've had back-to-back 20 assist games. It's a really good pass there. Good finish from Harris. They've only got three assists so far in this one. And they've hit 10 threes five times this season. They're four and one on over that record. They've hit two threes tonight. The only game they've lost when hitting 10 threes. Well, this will help. If Travis can start knocking them down, that's their third. They need that from Luke Travis. He needs to keep shooting that too. Just with confidence, just understanding either on the pass, running through the catch, getting downhill, really attacking the basket. Or if they're off you at all, just let it fly, man. Let him fly. He's been knocking them down. Take a look at the Amy replay. And to be honest, they're going to give him that shot. So regardless right now, if he makes a whole lot of them, that's what you want to see. No second guess. Just turn straight into it, catch and shoot. Adelaide got their starting group back out there. It's a hard one for, for Luke too. He's got, he's got that fine line of does he want to try and you know improve his game and, and get to that next level, which I think he deserves to be at in the NBA, or are you trying to do the team thing for the success of the own you know of your teammates? And it's a tough one. Sometimes in his head he might be thinking, you know what, I'm better off just passing this one down. Why not make two in a row? Couldn't quite. But if he keeps shooting those with confidence, gives himself an ability to keep developing. I think that next level is not far away from him consistently. Franks, that's what he wanted to get at. When he put in the first quarter, Daniel Johnson for that high low. He's got the seal, just needs someone to flash so he gets that easy bucket. That one two punch, Franks and Cleveland, 15 between them as Norton responds to the other end. Johnson started well. The six early points. I was playing at RIC Arena, but that's how they're going to play. They play super fast. Everybody kind of has a green line. It's Mitch Norton with back-to-back jumpers. That's a really good knockdown for him, just shooting 18.5% from three. They're starting to get rolling now. That's four three-pointers for them. As you said, when they get 10, they're four and one this season. Here's Drimmy. Bryce Cotton right in goes with a step back. Bryce hasn't got too many touches right now. He's, he's sitting out there on two points. He's one of five from the field. Last time these teams faced each other, he had a, a quiet first three quarters and uh, obviously turned it up. We know how that one finished. Four three pointers in the fourth quarter for Bryce Cotton in that one as Johnson again helps himself to an easy two and they're getting a lot of buckets down low. Are they why? I give a lot of credit for Anthony Drewing there, just turning the corner, making things happen. Travis again is going to try his luck and again just rims out. He's getting good looks though. It's now Cotton. Also misses. Franks being fouled. 
Yeah, we're just between up in landing space there, Jesse Ragstar. Pink. Red Army doesn't like it. Pink Army. You going with Pink Army tonight? The Pink Army tonight, yep. I'm going to look at it here. It's a great angle. Nice stuff. And just, you can hear there. It sounds like it's after the shot because you can see there, Franks had come down from his shot and then Ragstar just continued to take steps forward. Yeah, well, that seems to be what he's arguing about. And I think the referee's explained it. Franks with the nine points, three rebounds. And it'll be an offensive foul against Daniel Johnson. So the lead led by nine points at quarter time. That was their biggest quarter time lead of any game this season. Just managed to keep that margin. Perth trying to read into it. Nice point, just the two points. There's Thomas. Well, that's how you can take advantage of teams that are going to play like that. Sit in Bryce Cotton's pocket in the corner. So you run that ball screen on his side, knowing there'll be no help as Drew enters straight back. He's got a few more words to say to the Pink Army. He has eight points now, Anthony Drimmick. The beard wonders back. He's playing at a high level. It's, uh, it's great to see him in this kind of mindset. Cotton to Thomas out to Manic wide open. That's a layup. That's a layup. The way Brady Manic shooting it. And all his struggles at the start of the year. He's still shooting 40% from outside. Johnson wants to take the youngster on. Goes straight at him. Draws the foul. That's a tough matchup for anyone. But if it's your first year and you don't know who DJ is, that's uh, that's a long night at the office, I think. Oh, I'm not sure of the scout here from Tom Blanchfield. Anthony Drewing's going to shoot no matter what. If you go under and just invite him, he's already not. One of or might be the top two score the most points in the NBL in the 40 minute era. The man's an absolute walk. Well, he is. He's done it his whole year. I'll tell you what, he is for sure. One of, if not the most underrated players in the history of the NBL because he's, he's very quiet. He just goes about his business. Very unassuming, but he's up to 10 points. He spoke off the top. Three straight games in single digits. Oh, loves RAC and Arena. He does. Loves the jungle. He's already got 10 points. Still have plenty of time left in this first half as Norton is also getting some points. They need this. They need this from other contributors. This Norton, he's shown the ability to turn it on when he has to when the team is requiring scoring. And why right now they need to do it. Bryce Cotton hasn't had a few touches yet in this second quarter. So other players have to step up. Webster's been great. Manic hit the three. Now Mitch Norton's getting on the scoreboard. Let's get back to courtside. Damian Martin. Yeah, you've just been speaking about Dan Johnson as he goes to the bench for a well-earned rest, but he has dominated the Wildcats playing at RAC for over 10 years. Now, but funnily enough, don't just sell him short, guys. He's also a Commonwealth Games silver medalist alongside Jesse Wagstaff. So two guys you probably never thought would play three-on-three -three basketball with teammates in the off-season. Well, you think it's a cheat code in times of final five. Three x three, you eat that alive. He did a lot. He can he do everything. He can put it on the deck. He draws fouls. He's physical. He's seven foot. And that's what people don't understand is sometimes DJ's had a bit of a bad rap, but until you meet the guy, you don't really understand who he is as a person, how he is as a teammate. And anyone has ever asked me, I've always said he's one of the first people I would pick if I was going to put a team together because the man is absolutely unguardable and he's an amazing guy. So he's got the best of both worlds. And Frank's. He's feeling good, up to 12 points. Five of seven from the field. You spoke about his efficiency peak pre-game. He's playing at an MVP level right now. He's fouled against Blanchfield, it looks like. Right here, Brady Maddock. Well, Franks hasn't shot the three ball well this season, but it doesn't matter because he has found a new set of confidence in the last couple of weeks. Free throws for the 36ers. Yeah, we're trying to figure out who's shooting it. There's a lot of 
people competing for that loose rebound. Of course, this season, but thanks to the Trade Financial, we know they're giving away guaranteed $50,000 into now nbl.com.au forward slash legends for your chance to win. Exactly what they're doing here in the replay center. Just figure out who got fouled. And oh, geez, take your pick. If the foul's on Blanchfield, he's cleaned up three people here. I think it might go to Anthony Drummond, and it is. He used his experience, just walked to the line. Two shots, guys. Act confident, just yeah. go and take it. Who's that on? Me, boys. Get out of the way. Look at him, he knows it too. Is that a good start. We've got the eight points, a couple of boards. Oh, you, you can't. If you're hyping up the pink army, you cannot give away Burgess. There we go. Perth fans are on their feet. They want the Burgers. No. Oh, you've got to yeah, silence him after. Yeah, he's not going to do that, is he? Are you giving away Burgers at RSN Arena this week? I gave away Burgers last week against Melbourne United. Um, Oh yeah, oh, just a matter of the people, that's your own fans get hey, you know that. Shout out Jimmy and Zave. I, uh, I work out Zave. Jimmy's uh, the owner of a couple of Hungry Jacks franchises. I train his son uh, every week. I do a session with him. They're absolute legends and I apologise for your three franchises getting rinsed for the... Blanchfield just couldn't finish and still get the score in this game. Well, he's only had double figures twice in 10 games, Tom Blanchfield, and he's really struggled at RAC Arena so far to start NBL 23. Just seven points is his best performance on his home floor. I'm going to look here, foul on Brady Manick with a hedge. He's just struggling for the season, isn't he, Blanchfield? Averaging just the seven points. It's his lowest tally since 2011. Well, he has been struggling. You know what he's not struggling with? He's up a lip. That is a phenomenal... <laughs> November effort. <laughs> That's a stash. Whatever else is in there, he's got something hidden because that is an absolute stash, boys. That is straight out of Super Troopers. One! Just, just Perth just continue to try to chip into this lead. The other way to being able to hold it at bay, keep that sort of 8 to 11 point margin for most of this game. And Bryce Cotton, only one field goal attempt in this quarter so far. He has seven minutes of play, and he's only got one shot. And, and no matter how what you try to stick around, it's not going to get the job done because you still need to feed him. Because if you just don't, the defense will slowly start to wear him down. You've got to make sure he stays checked into the game. We know he can flip the switch. Make no doubt about it, but still needs to be part of the offense if he's not shooting the ball or touching it. Well, we know at some stage in this game, he'll catch fire, Bryce Cotton. At the moment, 36 is doing a great job defensively, and Trinic's been feeling good. It's a bit short on that one. They get the offensive board. That's a confident shot. And then another crack at it. And this is the issue for the Wildcats. Drimmy gets it to Soto. Oh, that's a nice finish. It's a great find by Anthony Drimmy there. It's too easy. Drimmy just putting his head down. Just no dribble move, just turning the corner. How yeah, nice is it for Soto? Just gets on his tippy toes and dunks. And they might get more fast break points here. It's all oh, in the showtime oh, 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 from boy. Cleveland to Franks. Cannot turn it over against the Adelaide 36ers. They are out. And John really will call a timeout because it's out to 13 points. There's one one word to describe this, and this, this is the first play we saw Anthony Drink. Just put his head down. Thomas got lost. In the end, a nice little dunk from Kai Soto. Have a look at this. One word to describe this behind the back pass. Unnecessary. <laughs> look pretty, though. Look good. Frank's up to the 14 points. We saw Kai Soto with that dunk, getting some good minutes. We're gonna take a listen to him at half time and get to understand and know a bit more about the young star. It's just my, my goal to inspire a lot of people, especially in the Philippines, to feel like if Kai can do it, I, I, I can do it too. I can do it better than Kai, you know? The game has brought me so much blessings. You know, if you love the game, the game will love you back. He's a superstar, and he's hard.
Haven't seen it a whole lot tonight, but make no mistake, he can get a half all down the track. What a place you want to be stranded on, Bryce Island. They eat into this 13-point lead before half time. Give him some confidence going into the break. Webster, a good first turn. Hasn't scored in this second quarter. Shot clock ticking down. Good feed from Bryce Cotton. The block. Galloway's got a bright future, both him and his brother. Turnover. I'll give some points here for the Wildcats. Harris, going into the game. Another one had a, he's had a lot of success at the NBA one level. Not shy on confidence. Seems to be okay. Two. So John really just giving some minutes to different some looks. Just trying to get something happening on offense. Brady Manning for the seven points. Mitch Norton leading the Wildcats with eight. And Corey Webster. As Harris knocks down both. We do you want to see a bit more of Mitch from the Perth Wildcats? Second they sort of try and eat into this margin. I just think a, a little bit of their horns action with Bryce. Just put the ball in his hands. Uh, I think right now, whenever he's got the ball and he's making plays to their big men uh, or for others, it's looking good for, for Perth. With Toddy going to the bench, he has that turnover, the baseline drive. He has a clear lane for a little reverse layup or even a layup. And he's looking to pass the ball, but I think he needs to be aggressive. But as you said before, Harris comes in, a bit of aggression. That'll do it. Good feed from Webster to Thomas. They are getting good looks because of the way they are guarding Bryce Cotton. Staying in his pocket, you put him in the right spots, you're going to get those little pick and rolls. Tony Martin, what are you seeing courtside? Yeah, no, I've actually got a question for Creaky. I wasn't renowned for being a prolific scorer, so I thought I'd go to someone who is. But when you go at half time, either on zero or two or only four points, what is the mindset when you know the team's expecting you to drop 20 on any given night? I think this, the only pressure you really give yourself is the expectation that you are only a scorer, and that's the only thing you can contribute to the team. Bryce is an amazing player. You spoke about myself trying to be a scorer, but that's not always me. I try and make sure I'm doing everything else I can. So whether it's just crashing the O-glass, boxing out, talking on defense. That's a poor turnover. And Cleveland makes them pay too easy. Any of those things, you just want to do the intangibles. And right now, Bryce is kind of just playing into the game at a really slow pace. He's not really up and in defensively. He's not getting deflections. So I think he's trying to get his energy up, but hopefully the second half he can go and find that next gear. But the rest of the team's doing a pretty good job of keeping him alive. But, yeah, we, we really need to see Bryce take another step up in not just the offensive section, but also in other areas too. Another transition layup for the Adelaide 36ers. They are making the Wildcats pay. Can they finish here? It'll be Webster. He leaves it long. Bit of time left over there on the clock. Well, they'll call half time. We can't get a holding foul. Which I'm really not happy, but 13 points the deficit. Adelaide have posted 54 points. Robert Franks with the 14. Daniel Johnson getting himself involved. 10 first half points. Anthony Drimmick with 11. Cleveland doing it at both ends of the floor. And the crowd is silent in the jungle, normally so up and about. They've struggled at home this year. They have, and too many turnovers. So letting Adelaide get out and run, that's how they want it. Well, let's get down to Damian Martin, who has Dan Johnson with him. Ten first half points, Dan. A great game so far for you and the team. What are you made of the first 20 minutes? I think we're just sharing the ball a bit better. Um, you know, we talked about it getting stagnant, and we look pretty awful when that's happening. So just moving the ball and trying to get stops and run. And a very quiet half for Bryce Cotton, but what do you expect from him in the next 20? Uh, he's not going to stay quiet for long, we know that. So, um, yeah, we just got to do a job. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of good defenders in the guard spot, so they'll just rotate on him and hopefully keep him quiet. Best of luck in the second, mate. Daniel Johnson loves playing at RAC Arena. And they lead by 13 points, the Adelaide 36ers. And as we go to the break, let's get to know a little bit more about Kai Soto. I am from the Philippines, born and raised. I play for the Adelaide 36ers. You got a seven foot three guy running the floor. 
And finishing like this. I fell in love with the game of basketball because of my dad. Uh, he played professionally. Even when I was a small kid, I uh, was with him in every practice, every game, and just watching him play. And now I'm here with the 36ers in the NBL. And my dad, he always texts me halftime after the game, and then he calls me to go back to the hotels. I just love the game, and uh, the game has brought me so much blessings. I'm lucky to have a, have a dad like that. Basketball is like a religion in the Philippines. Everybody plays basketball, so you don't even need to wear basketball shoes. And I play against, you know, these tricycle drivers, construction workers. You just need a ball, and then there's a basket, and just play 5 on 5. Very physical. Oh, baby! Kai Soto has come ready to play! Uh, everybody has their dream to represent their country. It means so much to me and my family. You know, every time I put that jersey on, I always give 100% for my country. So. Damn, you got away. I can't <laughs> I mean, I, I try my best, but uh, it's, it's really hard to hide it when you're seven foot. I look at it as a blessing, you know, just people uh, supporting me all the way. It's just my, my goal to inspire a lot of people, especially in the Philippines, to feel like if Kai can do it, I, I, I can do it too. I can do it better than Kai, you know? all the action when you order Hungry Jack's delivery. Get the new big, thick, crunchy, juicy Jack's fried chicken burgers or flame grilled whoppers made fresh to order. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Better. Mount Everest, it calls us begging to be conquered. So we climb. No matter how heavy the task, we continue to push and whilst prying eyes wait to see us fall, Ladies and gentlemen, that can't look away. Inside the 20, my fantasy team needs this feeling. Wow. That give me two games at once, you know, eight games at once. Can't miss a moment feeling. Touchdown, Dallas. That biggest season ever. <laughs> 18 weeks of every touchdown from every game, every Monday morning feeling. Could this be a miracle? It's Murray Magic. NFL Red Zone. Live Mondays on the ESPN app. ESPN FC is here all week. Welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. The quickest and wittiest banter. Uh, Robbo, you were saying Frank is mentally weak thinking, man. Nonsense! Enough of that. ESPN FC, daily on ESPN2. Half-time RAC Arena at the 
Perth Wildcats have got their work cut out to try and get back into this contest because the Adelaide 36ers, they lead by 13 points. It's their biggest half-time score of the season. They have 54 on the board. Perth Wildcats, just 41 points. And they are having their way. And Kai Soto has had an influence on the defensive end. Robert Franks continuing his MVP form. And Bryce Cotton, just the two points at half-time. We get down to Damien Martin, who's seeing all the action court side as we take a look at the Hungry Jacks halftime highlights. Marto, what's going on with the Perth Wildcats? Yeah, I think they've fallen in the trap. It's been a little bit too stagnant. So whoever has the ball last week when they're playing against Creaky South East Melbourne Phoenix team, there was still movement to try and occupy the help side defenders. And that resulted in Bryce Cotton getting some backdoor cuts and some easy laps. We're not seeing any of that. It's way too stagnant. And then I put my eyes down to the rebound count. We've spoken about it on multiple occasions in regards to the Wildcats all season. They're losing that count by five. They're only really scoring off offensive rebounds and putbacks, but credit the 36ers, they're limiting that. They're getting the board, they're getting outrun, and putting some pressure on the ring, a la the style that the 36ers have been known for for over a decade. Well, for a deeper dive of what the Adelaide 36ers are doing to Bryce Cotton in particular, let's get over to the analyzer, to Pete Hooley and Mitch Creek. Yeah, thanks, Joey. Look, we're talking about Bryce Island a lot. We haven't seen it a lot tonight, so credit the Adelaide 36ers. To, to be honest, the one way you can really guard Bryce Cotton, don't let him touch the ball, and they've done a good job of that. This was the one possession they had where we saw Bryce in a, on his island. We call it the isolation. He's got three options. Where you can see him right here. So he's got the ball where he rises up in that hand right here. That's when Bryce Cotton is at his best because he has three opportunities where he's either going to have his little pull back into a step back where he likes to draw the foul. He's either going to rise straight up or he's going to do an in and out and get downhill. And Creaky, as you've seen, we know, this right here from Antonius Cleveland, too much space. So what do you think you want to see if you're a team trying to guard Bryce Cotton in that isolation? I know for us and myself especially, we want to try and bring him to the nail. Now, for people at home, the nail is the middle middle part of the court so we want to force Bryce down into this area. Mitch McCarron is going to come up and run and almost jump at the ball forcing this pass across court. Drimmick has to be ready to rotate up. Now understanding if this is a shooter we wanted to make one more pass. Franks has to be already on a string to a top Lansfield and obviously DJ has to be engaged ready for wag stuff. Now as that happens we want the ball out of Bryce Cotton's hands. Once the ball's out then it's anyone else's game. But for us, we don't want it in his hands. And so his ball was in his hands here. That's too much space for Antonius Cleveland. This is a tough shot. This is what Bryce Cotton does. You can't let him get downhill. They haven't let him touch it. And we see a little bit when we go to a court setup like the coaches talk about. So this is Bryce Island. It can be anywhere on the court. This is what Bryce Cotton wants to see. Loves to get to his isolation. Talk to me a little bit about how you load up behind. You want him to see a crowd because you can't defend Bryce Cotton one-on-one. -on -one. You definitely can't. And as we saw before, Bryce is over on the left side of the floor. We understand that if he goes down the left side of the floor, that's where he wants to go. He loves his left hand. But you want to send him down the middle. We already load this guy up. Everyone else is on a string, ready to move, as we saw before. Now, if you get this picture looking perfect, the chances are he's not always going to make the shot. But we saw it a few games ago when we won by, I think, one or two points. We had penetration down the middle. We didn't get the nail, but we made one extra pass, one extra. Unfortunately, they didn't make the shot. Luckily for us, we got the win. Keep an eye on Bryce Lyon. I'm sure they're going to get plenty of opportunities in the second half. Yeah, brilliant stuff, boys. We know that they'll be making adjustments in the Perth Wildcats huddle and Bryce Cotton will get going in the second half and of course we do know this season with thanks to Latrobe Financial that we're giving away a guarantee $50,000 all you need to do is pretty straightforward just make a half court shot send us your video, make it as creative as you can and you have a chance to win as we said $50,000 and take a look at some of the highlights there, it can be anywhere it can be on the courts, the streets at the MSAC, wherever it is it's grand, pretty good Hungry Jack's Baconate is back. Oh, what's better than bacon? <laughs> More bacon. Get a Baconator Deluxe with four rashes of bacon. Or try Jack's Fried Chicken Baconator. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Mitsubishi Triton. Super Select 2 four-wheel drive. It's the dial that puts a smile on yours. Nothing can frighten a Triton. Please. I'm good. It's got your name on it. No, it's got your oh, name on it. Please. I would bring you joy no, to see no, you. Really. Please. I'm good. Thank you. I'm oh, really good. Please. Enjoy. Enjoy.
But the prettiest sight to see is the holly that will be. More prawns? More everything. Because you can't overcook Christmas. Aldi. Good, different. Get out of the city and into an adventure that moves the whole family. When you feed your kids the protein, fiber, multigrain, B vitamins and iron in Nutrigrain, they will be unstoppable. Well, they won't be unstoppable, but it will give them the fuel they need to try again and again. And there it is. That's it, Mum. Play it cool. Fuel their effort with the protein, fibre and energy in Nutribrain. Did you think you could relax? That you'd seen everything there was to see? Or have you realised you can't look away and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. One week closer to kickoff. So much history, the passion runs so deep. Man. That's the way we answer! I know the This is the best effort. Wildcats trail by 13 points as always at the NBL. Plenty of entertainment and action off the court. Bit of a slam dunk contest at quarter time. We saw the Wildcat there, but I'm sure the fans really, they want to see the entertainment on the court from their team in this second half to see if they can peg back 13 point margin before we get to the second half. Let's get down courtside to Damian Martin because he has the driving force behind the pink game with him. I do indeed. I'm here with Dawn Gleeson. Dawn and Trevor were the brains behind this initiative, raising awareness and funds for breast cancer care at WA. Dawn, a two-time breast cancer survivor, what does this night mean to you? Oh, look, I just have to say I'm just so incredibly proud of the whole Perth Wildcats organization, and that includes the Red Army, for supporting this initiative, which has quite clearly become part of the DNA, I think, of the organization being in its sixth year. It's an incredibly exciting, exciting night. It certainly is. I know it's one the players all look forward to when the schedule is released. But what is your message to anyone out there watching right now? Look, I think my message has been clear from the start, and that is know your body. And if something doesn't feel quite right, you need to go to the doc and you need to get it tested because early detection is key. Dawn, you're an inspiration to many. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Happy to see you. Well, it is an incredible story, incredible people. Just while we're watching the absolute gelatin show from Robert Franks with the left, if you don't mind. One shot. That's a great way to come out and feel good about yourself, isn't it? Go to your non-preferred side, hit a little jelly fan left-hand scoop and go make one of the his last four games, averaging the 21 points, seven and a half boards. He's already up to 17 in this one. Can the Wildcats get Bryce Cotton into this game? There's Thomas, a little handoff to Cotton. He wants to get the work, but again, good defense. Denying Cotton the ball. Blanchfield gets it into Thomas. Just been an issue for him. Missing a lot of those buckets. He did well, though, to strip the ball back, and he finished this time. Good defense from France. Great defense. He gets a little head shake. They are up and about the 36ers. This is what we expect from them. Drimic wide open. Rims out. Tony's Cleveland's energy. He's everywhere. They said they had such an inconsistent start for the Adelaide 36ers. They split their games last weekend, but... Looks like we're just starting to see their best basketball. As Cleveland checks out of this one early. Look at this block from Robert Franks. 
Block his elbow? Well, it might have been a bit of contact. Cool. I think he did on the way down. That's why John really was not happy whatsoever. Tell you what, Antonius Cleveland begged CJ Bruton to challenge this call. He thought for sure he didn't touch it, and in the end, he, I mean, it looks like he's got... They have challenged yet. They've called the challenge. So. Well, they have, and they, I think he's still trying to figure out what they're going on about. How do you go with the coach challenge when you scream at... Now, Simon Mitchell, he's had his <laughs> moments where coach's challenges hasn't been his friend. Does he, is, are you in the trust circle? If you say, I need that challenge, he'll believe you? You'd have to be. I would like to think that he would trust me, but I wouldn't actually go to him and be like, oh, that's ours. I mean, if it's the end of the game, obviously it's a very, very close situation, close call. You've got to take it and you've got to use it. But what is the rule, though, for the players? Do you have it? Do you speak of it? Like, are the players allowed to... Uh, ask look, for it. You leave it to the coaches. I guess we have freedom of speech. We don't. We don't hold anyone's mouths closed. But at the same time, that you know, the, the coaches are there to make informed and, and correct decisions as well, the best way they see it. But as playing group, our, our philosophy is next play. We want to try and be next play everything, whether it's a good call, a bad call, or anything the in between. Is unsuccessful. The call on the four is confirmed. Well, it's safe to say Antonio Sleven has fallen out of that circle of trust with <laughs> CJ Brute. But here's the thing. So it's those kind of bang bang plays where. You're so close to it, and you, you seen a little bit in the NBA. It's not in that instance, but if someone goes to cross over, and as the defender, your hand gets in there, and you kind of push it out. But as you push it out, it touches the fingertip of the offensive player, where in bang-bang motion, 100% it's off the defense. When you slow it down frame by frame, you're going to lose it. And that's the other thing. No, that's going to help Bryce Cotton definitely fouled on that one. Antonius Cleveland's arguing the point, but he's not going to get another challenge. Bryce Cotton will help himself. He's almost automatic from the free throw line. 52 from 54 for the season. So we take a look at the Amy replay. Well, as we spoke about at halftime, Antonio's Cleveland just got to know your help is where the ball screen is. Got, I know it's Daniel Johnson on the ball screen. Your help is to that middle side. You can't let him get back to his left where there is no help. Then he gets that opportunity when he rises up with the ball in his hand. He's got three options. If you don't close the gap and force him one way, he's going to beat you. Yeah, look at the Over on the outside, make Bryce get and break the three-point line. You don't want him coming off and trying to beat your inside shoulder over the screen. Just chase around the outside, around his back, and just make him drive it. Cleveland, good defense for Blanchfield. Great block from Blanchfield. And those free throws just get something going for Bryce Cotton. It's one of six from the field, only the four points. Blanchfield is still getting the score in this game. This is his chance, wide open. That's automatic. Needed that. Well, Blanchfield, scrappy play again. If they're going to rely on knocking down threes off broken possession, it's going to be a long second half. Even then, though, Bryce has got the ball. He makes a few more plays. The on-ball comes. They hard show. And then another sloppy pass from Cleveland. You want to get Bryce the ball again right now. Get him another high pick and roll. Make him make plays out of it. A little cleaner, a little tidier. Toddy's just hit one. Bryce is feeling good after a couple of free throws. One thing's for sure. Even if he's got two points or no points, they're still going to be aggressive when he's got the ball, which is going to open up everybody else. So this is the first time all game I think we've really seen Bryce a little more pep in his step, a bit more explosion, really trying to make plays now. The defense from Franks, so he kicks it out to Wagstaff, who was ready for it. And the Perth crowd just starting to get into this one. Oh, it's not surprising. It's, it's a bit of a shocker. He just let him have the ball in his hands to create, not necessarily shoot. And good things are happening. For the first time, the pink army tonight on their feet, making some noise. And the 36 to respond. I'll draw the foul. This is the one. We really want to try and make sure that you're getting over this screen. If you're going to really come and help off that nail, look to the right of the screen. Help comes. You've already got to be on the move. Mitch McCarron's got to come and either get a little stunt to Jesse Wagstaff, but that's almost like a little broken analyzer we had at halftime. And that's on the Amy replay, but you can see there, Cleveland had a little bite at it. It was in two minds. Didn't know whether he wanted to fully commit to help or he wanted to get back to Wagstaff. Another turnover from the 36s again. It was Cleveland. A bit of a sloppy pass. And now Cotton uh -oh. starting to get warm. Well, Damien Martin asked you the question. 
going to halftime with just two points, what's your mindset? No, I think we've got our answer from this man. He does a great job of really drawing contact just there, finds his hip, leans on him a little bit, sees Jake has his arm in, one up. You need to have two hands out and really show verticality. A superstar like Bryce Cotton, he's going to get some of these 50-50 calls a bit more often than not, and Jimmy's got to be a bit smarter than that and get his hands out of the cookie jar. Well, let's get back down to Damian Martin, courtside. Yeah, speaking about Bryce Cotton, we used to have a rule when we played against Casper where, where if he had a quiet quarter or a quiet half, the last thing we wanted to do was send him to the free throw line to give him a couple of easy ones. He sees it go through the net. He steals a bit of confidence, and we're seeing that right now with BC. Some of the one of the worst things you can do when a guy is quiet is send him to the free throw line. Oh, and now he gets the friendly bounce. Right on cue, Damien Martin. And, and now you're just starting to get a little bit nervous if you're a 36er. I'm oh, glad he bets with Caswell. I have good memories of those opportunities. And another turnover. He'll be back to that. Thomas in the strip. Here he goes again. It's game on. Trailed by 16 earlier. As Cleveland just silences the crowd momentarily. Well, gee, he's lucky he made that. It's only as Cleveland. They've been in all sorts the last couple of minutes. They just needed to probably slow down. Needed that too. Broke a 10 zip run that Perth had just quickly put on. And Sal on the ground. Whatever Bryce had in his water at halftime. Can someone get me a bottle of that? I think you had it last week, mate. They can't. I don't drink water at halftime. I don't really drink water in the game at all. I don't get really sucked off too much. <laughs> I don't have time. Take a look at Bryce just starting to get going. Two points at halftime. He's already got eight in this third quarter. But he's active again this time. Kicks it out to a wide open Norton. Use it! Use it! Smart rotation there from Adelaide, understanding that Bryce has obviously hit a couple of shots, seen a couple go down. Oh, it's a beautiful finish from Cleveland. Really starting to turn on the Jets right now. But that's it, you got to rotate from someone like Mitch Norton. Yes, he hasn't been always a great three-point shooter, but he can knock it down. So you've got to be a little bit careful playing with fire there, but understanding that Bryce is hot right now, you don't want to give him any clean ones. Just long on that one. And then the turnover. Three on one. Drimmy, good defense from Mitch Norton, although call for the block. He doesn't like it. Almost did a terrific job. Crowd unhappy. He's not happy. No, Pete, look, what's your call? Well, he's the perfect angle for it. Just didn't quite get in front of Drimmy. He read it right, but just couldn't quite get square enough to him. Jeez, he was close. Yeah, that's real close. Coach's challenge close enough. They'll keep it up their sleeve. Jimmy will go to the line. He's got 11 points. The starters doing all the damage for Adelaide in this one. Anthony Jimmy coming off a season best 21 points last Thursday night against Melbourne United. Great five minutes here from the Wildcats. Got nine offensive rebounds. What's the down overall on the rebounding count? But when you get that many second opportunities, that's going to help tick the scoreboard over. Interesting we haven't seen much of Corin Galloway after having a big game against New Zealand the other night with the 13 points. He's hard to see many courts on. Webster checks in. He was good in the first term, hasn't scored since. This is that one, and again, a fast break chance for Adelaide. Bench didn't take it. Cleveland, though, she likes the match up down low on Bryce Cotton. Leaves it short. Mitchell into the game, sets the kick for Webster. Travis, Manic, and Bryce Cotton for Perth, Soto, McCarran, Franks, Cleveland, 
than Detch for Adelaide. As Webster trying to get going again, makes the three. He's been really good tonight. Corey Webster, really efficient off the bench. Three or five from deep into double figures, 11 points. Much needed spark. After a slow start, and then Perth Wild Cat Colors. It's three weeks in a row now. He's with double figures. Providing some good offense. It's Cleveland is left wide open. They can eat this margin back to within four points. Potentially even three. Travis had a few cracks at it tonight. And another turnover. Antonius Cleveland. Well done by McCarran. CJ Bruton asking some instructions. For his team trying to get a bit of offense going. Just the 10 points so far in this third quarter. Travis decided to go alone. Great defense from Mitch McCarran. And they'll keep possession. Got to, got to share that ball in transition, that one. You know, you, you've got Franks yelling at the referees, trying to get a call. And Manic, you know, checks back into the game. Hasn't really seen the ball too much this quarter. And right there, just a little dish off. Let him finish over a small Mitch McCarran. I'm going to do a pass fake. A little bit more believable than that one. Yeah. Of you know, the Wildcats have had back-to-back -back wins to break that five-game losing streak. They're trying to make a three on the trot. The trick point he was found. So did the crowd. Rest letting him play. Wide open. Marshall. Big stick, isn't it? That's a big shot. Just never short of confidence. Sometimes as a rookie, when you, you're just coming in, you don't really understand the moment either. Like, there's a lot of a lot of events in first way, a couple of missed calls, and, you know, wrestling and play a little bit, it's exciting, but to just come out in transition and just, you know, pull up, splash, just like that. No fear. So back out to nine points. For Karen Marshall, we oh, go two again. For a dollar. Two minutes here. Manic will try his luck. Both teams getting up and down the floor in this third quarter. And again, for Perth's hard work. Trying to bite 13 at half time. They've just been able to pick it back a little bit. Had the momentum. Adelaide have been able just to stifle that. McCarran, who played game 200 the other night. Just uses all his experience and class to get to the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. He can do this a lot more. We've seen it in spurts. But I think he catches the defense slipping now because everybody knows he's such a pass-first dominant guard. He can score when he wants to. Struggling shooting the ball from deep. But he's still a strong guard. He can get in there and finish. Of course, the prize has just continued this season. Given away this NBL season 23. Thanks to MG, we're giving away a brand new MG ZS EV electric car paid at just under $45,000. All you've got to do is enter now at nbl.com.au forward slash win MG. Back to 11 points. Thomas trying to get going. Got the six points. He did well. The outstretched arm of Soto. He did really well. Look at his numbers there. Eight, six, and four. He's a willing passer. Just quietly goes about his business. Stuffs the, stuffs the stat sheet. They need to stop here, the Wildcats. Marshall attacks Travis, gets to the basket, got the foul. Oh, Marshall. In a Movember. Not quite as good as Toddy Blanchfield. Oh, 2024. Go. Two shots. I'm not sure what we were you know, upset about. He was, check, he was just checking his ring of watch. Yeah, that's a, that's a foul in any sport, I think. One shot. One. Hey. Two shots. Is that a cheeseburger? Yeah, one? chance for the burgers. Oh, this is a little testing. I might get one of these in the last oh, shot. 
Sudden, it's back to the half time point margin. 13 points. Well, they could look to extend it here. Soto with that little right oh. arm skyhook. Even though he's a lefty, he loves shooting with that right. Yeah, they're not preferred. That's the confidence he has. Bryce Cotton will hold it for the final play of the turn, but a sloppy last minute or so from the Perth Wildcats. Seen them lose the quarter by two points. This is where you might want to get a little bit of help coming your way. It's Bryce Island. Can't get it to fall. It might just be one of those nights for the Perth Wildcats. Again, they're arguing. Oh, they might have a case here for sure, it looked like. Got away with one. Bryce Cotton refusing the screen once again. You couldn't have said any better at halftime, Pete. That's where that's a, a prime example of Bryce just rejecting the screen, understanding where the help isn't coming from, and, and gets his shot. Well, Bryce tried to get warm, but the Adelaide 36ers, they have all the answers here at RAC Arena. They lead this one by 15 points in three-quarter time. Catch all the action when you are the Hungry Jack's delivery. Get the new, big, thick, crunchy, juicy Jack's Fried Chicken Burgers or Flame Grilled Whoppers made fresh to order. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Join Tony Reale and his cast of sports writers for the hottest debates shaping the sports world. Yeah, I don't even think you blinked while you were giving that answer. That insurmountable 15 and a half game lead is down to six. Around the Horn on ESPN. met less than three weeks ago and the Wildcats got up by five points. It was off the back of this man, Bryce Cotton. He shot four three-pointers in the fourth quarter to lift them over the line. Well, can he do it again tonight? Because we might need to see some more Bryce Cotton heroics if they had to peg back this 15-point margin because the Adelaide 36ers seem to be in control. Boys, what have you made of Bryce Cotton? He's been a big focus tonight. All he was, he was a lot better, a lot more aggressive in that third quarter. Credit the Wildcats for just giving him the ball. He missed a couple of shots that he'd normally make, got to the free throw line when he got fouled on the three, but their offense looked better. Just defensively, they just fell asleep that last four minutes. Can they get going straight up with a three? Webster had a real good look. They shot it 43% last week in their win against you blokes. They were nailing everything. 
from three point range in South East Phoenix. Just a reminder, mate. Yeah, yeah look, we, we watched enough video on that, mate. Thanks for bringing that, Lee. It was, uh, it was great to reminisce about us getting absolutely rinsed at training by Simon Mitchell, telling us how bad we were defensively and how good they were offensively. So. Tonight, though, they're just struggling from three point range. Well, what hasn't helped? They're going to have to change what hasn't been working the last six games. Five of their last six, four, last fourth quarters. They've been outscored. So they're going to have to make a big change for that and we'll look no further than that game. I know you lost, but 37 points the Phoenix put on them in that fourth quarter. The fourth quarters haven't been too friendly to them. 37, that's a lot. Oh, it is. <laughs> Wasn't enough. Two for, a <laughs> <laughs> two for 155 points. If we could do that a bit more. Well, they're going to have to break the trend somehow in this fourth quarter tonight. I'm not sure why Simon's not... talking about defense. We can just do that a bit more. I mean, it's not a hard game. I don't know. Shout out Eric Hollinsworth, our high performance manager. He just says, just score more than the other team. Yeah, I'm talking about team. defense. Let's get back into Damian Martin, courtside. Did you say it was 37, Creaky? I think you needed 44, mate. I like you about that result. <laughs> but uh, I have been really impressed by Nick Marshall. I think he's been fantastic. And another youngster to keep an eye on is a guy by the name of Harry Wessels. He's currently playing at St. Mary's. And sitting courtside at the game is his dad, a future star of the game. Keep an eye on that player. Brady Manning, the nine points for him, doesn't quite reach the heights of his previous two games, where he had the 46 points combined, maybe he can have a big fourth quarter, we certainly know he can get hot, but again good ball movement from Adelaide, Franks with an easy two, he's got 19. This is the form of Robert Franks, 19.7 rebounds, doing a bit of everything. Young Marshall now, got the job defending Bryce Cotton. And he'll end up with the ball. Another turnover, and Marshall just happily gets to the basket. Time out. John really he's seen enough. Beautiful defense. Quarter. in the 36 is there. A lot of energy, a lot of hands, really active of all those on balls. Just getting and deterring those easy passes, those one balls. And uh, there you see, this is what Adelaide are like. When they get up and about like this, they're one of the best teams, if not the best and toughest team to guard in that entire league. In a blink of an eye, it's an 18-point lead, and that's a game high. Try Hungry Jack's new Jelly Belly Bursties in Sour Fizz Tingle or Bubblegum Frozen. Get exploding blueberries, grape or watermelon Jelly Belly Bursties only at Hungry Jack's. Hi there, welcome to Sports Center from our nation's capital. I'm Scott Van Pelt. Extended highlights, reaction, conversation with all on the way. Speaking of Judge, had his 50th last night. Are you mixing in any water since you celebrated? Uh, I had a couple sips. Just... What a day. Give me more. Arena. Yes, you want to win at home, but just being consistent about it. This is not the way they've gone about their business in, in the last two wins they've had, and they've just looked a little flat, to be honest. Overall, they've had little spurts as Luke Travis tries to get aggressive there. They've had moments where it looks like, okay, they're up and about, and just not enough consistently. They've only got eight turnovers, but they've been poor turnovers, careless ones. They've got 13 assists. They've hit nine threes, so all the stats that normally have led to wins at this stage, doesn't look like it's helping them get there. You're right, you're right. Travis just the four points tonight. One of six shooting for him. One. We get back down. Damien Martin, courtside. Yeah, I'm just watching the guys up close and personally. You just wonder where have the Wildcats gone wrong right now. And I think it's more of a, a case of not the course of the whole game, but more so in patches. Sean Dennis, who was a coach in the NBL, was an assistant coach for the Wildcats. He used to say that crunch time wasn't the final five or six minutes of the game. It was the last two minutes and the first minute of every quarter. And I just think the Adelaide 36ers have dominated in those three-minute patches for the game so far and built their lead every time it looked like the Wildcats were starting to climb back into it. Well, you spot on, Damo, and that's all we mentioned. Just 
be so nonchalant with the ball and allow to get out and play quick. There's Corey Galloway. So just the six minutes oh, in this game. Do they get double burgers if he misses three in a row? What do you get if you miss three in a row? Oh, you, you're the one who knows the franchise. Now we have a chat. Oh, no, 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 I got it. Don't worry about it. He's off speed, darling. Okay, Katie's zone. Small. Small Chiefs zone. Small Chiefs. Galloway seeing some minutes in this one. Because they're coming off the 13 point game the other night against the New Zealand Breakers. It's five for five for the field. It's oh. Travis again. That's what he can do. That quick first step from Luke Travis. Checked into the game in the first quarter and put his head down. Attack the rim. Probably didn't see it enough. The drink just caught standing up. Here's Drimmy. He's been aggressive right from the outset. Got the 12 points. Sunday the edge now. Pull up. Time for the Perth Wildcats. If they can get going, try and get it down to single digits. You know, Bryce Cotton can get hot. He's going to draw the foul. Jeez, that might feel good, though. Just float one off the top bar of the ceiling. And uh, even after the whistle, that still feels good. But again, I think offensively, we, we, we've I thought about like a broken record and for good reason but we've got 64 points with just over 7 minutes to go that's more than enough at this point in the game to have even a chance to win the problem is you've given up 81 yeah and look I don't think right now Perth's defence is at the level it needs to be I don't think John really really like that but I think they do have the potential to put you know scores on the board very quickly Norton gets the double figures for him 10 points and a technical foul. Technical foul. Zero. You saw Robert Franks was asking if there was an offer from Mitch Norton. Yeah, the referee just saying not in that one. So he must have had a couple more things to say after that. I'm going to look here. It's a great back door. Really good finish. And he's right there saying there's an offer. <laughs> he's got a really strong case. Just right in the, in the blind side of the referee who was standing underneath. But obviously he's doubled back down on his thoughts. And in the end... Off the technical. I like this from Perth, though. Up the court. A lot of pressure right now. Seven minutes to go. It's only a 14-point game. You see them get one or two stops in a row with the intensity on defense. This is where I think Bryce is really going to come alive these next two or three minutes. Make a few plays. Love to see him get back in this game and watch CJ go and call a timeout and make this close one. Both teams have a bit of a break until their next games. Perth have a row double to Brisbane and New Zealand. Franks sees the shot clock expire. Well, really nothing sort of offensive set from the 36ers. Whatever they were trying to get into, just nobody was on the same page. They were moving at the wrong time. No one set any kind of screens. Just playing into Perth's hands. This is not a game that you want to take lightly these next couple of minutes. Because as Mitch said, this man right here really needs a little spark. He's going to leave nothing in the oh, tank. Got some time off as Manic lets it fly. <laughs> Nine of 30 from deep are the first Wildcats. They are letting it fly. Adelaide will host Cairns next week and then go to Sydney. A couple of tough games for them. They've got a job to do tonight. There's Johnson. But he gets another easy bucket under the basket. Just took his time in there, didn't he? Just watched everyone sail by. I'm not sure what they were thinking. A little triple. And the turnover, and they've done this all night, Adelaide. They're four, they've held themselves to easy buckets, cannot, and they do it again. Cannot turn it over, cannot give up long rebounds. In the blink of an eye, they're down the other end, either shooting a three or a layup. Finally, Cotton gets one to drop. Look at this, Bryce Cotton just a nice little dump. Greg Manning, a little bounce in it. He's got a few dunks.
course tonight. Of course, the basketball action just continues to get better this weekend. Tomorrow night, what about this one, Pete? Cairns and New Zealand, the two most improved teams in the competition. Oh, cannot wait. They love, are going at it. It's going to be beautiful. Love both these teams. i tell you why. If you're, not, if you're not looking forward to just that one, but with Keanu Pinder, Derek Parton's been fantastic. But have a look at this. Wait for the Sydney Kings and the Cairns Thai fans as well. Keanu Pinder talking that talk. I love it. I absolutely love it. Saying that no, Sydney Kings, they can't shut him down. And to be honest, based on how he's played so far in NBL 23, he has every reason to believe that because he is seemingly unstoppable. Yeah, him and the young tight bands playing some wonderful basketball, but so are the breakers. That's a huge game. Cannot wait to see how that unfolds. Two teams who bottom of the ladder last year, title contenders this year, and then that's the game on Monday night that yeah. you're referring to. But before that, we get to see Creek in action on Sunday against the Illawarra Hawks. It's been a while since you played last. Uh, yeah, look, it's... Uh, Rest the old body. Yeah, it's nice. A couple oh, of days what? off. RDO, feet up. There's something special about that game, I believe, Joey. Milestone? Uh, milestone game? Uh, it's my 300th birthday. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> 300 games. That's right. Yeah. that old bitch. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm still a spring chicken. Well, I tell myself <laughs> that anyway, but my body tells me different when I wake up nowadays. It does help when you made your debut at 11. What a wonderful season it's been so far. Actually, none the wiser who's going to win this title is Daniel Johnson. He's been getting points under the bucket. Now he helps himself to a three, and he's found some form tonight. Daniel Johnson, an old teammate of yours, three of the games and stuff this season. Have you had a chance this week to kind of sit back and reflect on? You've got a lot left in the tank, but it's an incredible effort. Yeah, look, it is. It, it, it's special because you understand that there's been many years have gone by and many great players have come by, but also it's the memories, it's the bus trips, it's the flights, it's the you know the comedic games that you play after a game or it's the, the on-court battles you have. There's so many great memories you have as a basketballer and you know just as, as fans kind of come to games and the interactions you have, for me it's all about just the fans, like understanding and seeing the kids kind of grow up. There's, there's young you know boys and girls who I met when I was you know 18 years old, 12 years later, now they're you know, young, mature men and women. Um, it, it's pretty special to kind of see them grow up as you've kind of grown up in the league as well. Actually, they all come out on Sunday. Celebrate game 300 as Drimic. He started aggressive and he's going to finish this game aggressive. 14 points for during 5-9 from the field. He's got six assists as well. Martin finally starting to get something going. Might be too little too late for him. 17 points now. It's been a really quiet 17 points. He's got four assists. You see just the Wildcats. Every time they go on a run, they just can't string enough stops together on the defensive end. We spoke about it. Bit of a broken record, but on the glass. Losing the rebound in count. 32 to 23. Just cannot get enough rebounds. On the back of this man too. I mean, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. As we said, these teams have already met once as Cleveland in a tough finish. He's so good when he attacks the rim. 16 points for him, 8 of 14 shooting. And here they go again in transition. McCarran, a little bit of showtime. Oh, that's a good can't do that. Yeah. This is like a game, we haven't had a warning yet. Robert Frank's, Robert Frank's thinking he's over in Qatar. Oh, look at the Amy replay, look at the finish. He thinks he's in Qatar, look at this. That's, that's a yellow card, and is a delay game warning. Gosh, everyone plays, everyone three times in this NBL season. You play one team four times, and it's these two teams. So they're going to split their first two matchups, and they'll meet again in round 10. Of course, as we said with the ladder now, the Wildcats will drop the seventh with this loss tonight. And Adelaide just starting to climb. They'll get the fifth, starting to find their best basketball. Well, they still got a piece to add, don't forget. It'll be interesting to see what path they go down. And speaking of pieces to add, I don't know how far away it is because it's been you know, a topic of conversation for years. Bryce Conn citizenship, sooner or later, that thing is coming through. And if that does come through, what piece do the Perth Wildcats go out and get? Well, what do you think they need? What do you think both teams need? First, Adelaide 36 is what sort of player 
and should they be looking to add to this already talented roster? Well, it's an interesting one because even with Craig Randall, I thought that then underutilising Anthony Drink and Sunday Detch, two guys, two locals who can perform and play starters minutes on any other team. So now they're really starting to fit into their role. You've got Kai Soto as well. So they're probably looking at that probably that three, four spot on, maybe even a point guard. To be honest, they don't really need another piece. It's just a really glue guy to go out there and do it. I know defensively they're probably a bit concerned down low. I know Kai Sonner's a big shot blocker, but in terms of that banging body, uh, that's why it's for Australian basketball, but also for Perth. But I think you're right. Back in the days when they had Casey Prather, Dennis, they had some of those really big three, four wings. That's what they need, no doubt. Anyway, I don't know how far his rehab's away, but you're spot on with, with that kind of spot I would be going after if you're a Wildcats. You've got Mitch Norton, you can always play Bryce at the point. Kyle Zunig hasn't played tonight, but Luke Havis can bring the ball up. They still struggle on the glass, so that kind of athletic guy, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, they'd throw everything out to try and get John Mooney back. But that's not going to happen. Well, again, they've been comprehensively beaten on the boards tonight. The Perth Wildcats in Adelaide will retain possession. Right in front of their man, Damien Martin. Yeah, you bet. Guys have been playing the hypothetical of what do the Wildcats do when Bryce Cotton gets a citizenship. I've had a text message come through from Miles Plumley, who said, guys, I'm still in Australia. I'm ready to go. But he did give me a little footnote saying I'm currently playing C-grade local cop over here in Service Paradise. So we'll see how Miles goes. Well, <laughs> there you go. But you, you just want a window cleaner at this stage, I guess, if, if you're trying to find someone until the appropriate player falls in has comprehensively been in the rebounding count, make no doubt about it. Lumley familiar with the Red Army. Another offensive board. These are dangerous minutes too if you're uh, playing against Adelaide coming up next. Seeing DJ kind of just work his way in. 15 points right now, drawing fouls, getting back to the line, just seeing the ball go through a little bit. You know, for anyone like him or anyone that is a scorer in the game, all you need is one or two little moments like this, and then, you know, even though this is junk time, this is a nice little feeling. You get a young guy on you, go and switch some free throws. They have lost four of their last six games, the 36ers. It's an important win for them. Some players in form. Good balance. They've defended well. As we said, next week, they'll host Cairns on Friday, and then... Head up to Sydney on the Sunday. Big challenge. We'll find out more about this 36ers lineup and whether they are a genuine title contender. Well, it's hard to believe. I know they haven't shown a whole lot this season, but I'm still pretty high on them for what they can deliver. Now that they're making their focal point, Robert Franks, he's one of the best players in the league when he's playing like this. Daniel Johnson's going to do his thing. Mitch McCarron getting everybody involved. Had six, six, and six, and three. given up 80 points tonight. 80 is the magic number. Over the last two seasons, three of the top four each year have averaged against around 80 points. Two teams have given up 79, and then the other two teams have given up about 80, 81. So that's the magic number if you want to contend. Marshall, he's got a career high eight points for him tonight. Oh, I make he it might eight. make it 11. Not quite. I actually don't know why. I think Ollie Hayes Brown, you got to throw him out there for a couple of minutes. The big mullet, just let him go out there and just bang bodies and just rip down rebounds. I think that's something that you might be able to throw a different look at. And he's going to bring size, he's going to bring strength. And a guy like that, you can go out and say, look, you can be a little reckless. You can go at these overalls a little bit harder. Just make something happen. Oh, that's I, all you want. And I'm not bad, make it happen. I love that, where you basically say, don't be silly about it, but you've got five fouls. Go out there, be a big body. Get a jump hook, get a jump hook, play soul, and just rip down rebounds. That's where they've struggled, that big presence inside. Just eat glass for a couple minutes, and then we'll bring in the other guys. 
The hair, the hair is luscious, isn't it? Oh. It's, is it the best? Is it the best mop in the league? Oh, well, as someone who's about to lose it all, absolutely. Well, we see there in the corner, Adelaide's biggest ever win at RAC Arena. They've put them to the sword. That's their highest score this season. Or well, second highest. They scored 98 against the Phoenix, but Adelaide 36 have got the job done. Comprehensive win. And maybe they're just starting to put the competition on notice that they will be the force that we all thought at the start of the season. Coach CJ Bruton's done a wonderful job and they'll be mighty pleased with this 14-point win. Oh, they will be. Look, it's, they had patches where they were a little poor, had mental lapses, but to go on the road and to win the way they did, I think they are starting to put it together. And yes, we're going to always talk about the normal contributors, Daniel Johnson, Franks, Cleveland, Mitch McCarron, but... It's those guys, it's the Sunday Detch, it's the Anthony Drinks, and it's even right now the Nick Marshalls, those guys that were coming in, playing their role, were playing with confidence, which is going to help this team to continue to grow. There's a lot of season left, make no mistake, and maybe they got their growing pains out of the way early. And they enjoy playing on the road. That's four of their five wins now. They've been away from home. They'll climb the fifth on the ladder, and they're just building nicely into this season. Life without Craig Randall. And as you mentioned... Cleveland with the 16 points, shooting at 57%. Drimmick was aggressive early. Daniel Johnson got going. Pretty impressive, the 36ers. Yeah, look, they're, when they're, they're playing this kind of basketball, they're up and down.